Side hustles ignite the path to earning more money. They're like extra jobs you can do on the side without needing to invest a lot of money or time up front. There are so many different side hustle ideas, both online and offline, that you can explore. It's like going on an adventure to find the perfect side hustle that fits what you love to do and helps you make some extra cash. Here are 10 cool side hustle ideas to get you thinking about what might work for you. Let's jump into this world of endless possibilities and find the side hustle that matches your interests and goals. So, start with those that are currently in trend. Number 10, pet sitting or dog walking. If you love animals, pet sitting or dog walking can be a rewarding and straightforward side hustle. Many pet owners are in need of someone reliable to care for their pets while they're away at work or on vacation. You can offer your services in your local community by spreading the word to friends, family and neighbors, or by creating profiles on pet sitting websites and apps like Rover or Wag. Pet sitting typically involves visiting the pet owner's home to feed, play with, and check in on their pets while they're away. Dog walking entails taking dogs for walks during the day when their owners are busy. Both options allow for flexible scheduling and can be tailored to fit your availability. Number nine, become a virtual assistant. The term virtual assistant wasn't well known until the pandemic hit. But when lockdowns happened, many personal assistants started working online and some even made it their full-time job. Virtual assistants do all sorts of tasks like planning events and managing social media. Some jobs require working regular hours while others let you work when you want. If you're looking for a good side job, think about working for people in different time zones because they might pay more. Check out Facebook and LinkedIn groups where you can find job listings for virtual assistants with specific skills. There are lots of opportunities out there for people who want to try being a virtual assistant. Number eight, sell printables on Etsy. Making printables is a cool way to use digital tools like Canva or Photoshop to create fun stuff like worksheets or posters. You can sell these creations on Etsy and make some serious money. CNBC talked about one person who made $10,000 a year doing this, and many others make even more. Making seasonal printables, like holiday coloring pages, can help you make even more money. It's easy to set up a shop on Etsy, and you don't need any special licenses because Etsy protects your payments. This side job is great for people who are good at art or design, and you can start making money quickly. Since you probably already have the tools you need, like design subscriptions, it's a smart move to start selling printables with low costs and the potential for big profits. Number seven, flipping items. Have you ever thought about making money from something you enjoy doing? Well, here's an exciting idea. You can make cash by buying things for cheap and then selling them for more. It's like going on a treasure hunt where you find great deals and turn them into money. Imagine finding rare or really cool stuff and selling them for a good price. And if you're good at fixing up old things, you can make even more money by making them look nice again. So test your buying and selling skills, where every sale feels like a win and your bank account gets happier. Number six, start freelance writing or editing. One of the best ways to make extra money is by doing freelance writing and editing online. Websites like Upwork and Fiverr have lots of jobs you can apply for. If you're good at English or have studied it, you can find lots of work in this field. Upwork has clients who pay a lot for freelance work, so you can make good money. If you know more than one language, you can also do translation work for even more jobs. Another website called Crowd Content lets you write product descriptions and other stuff. It might take a while to build up a good reputation, but experienced writers can find really good jobs in this area. Number five, do online tutoring. If you have teaching experience or know a lot about certain subjects, you can try online tutoring for some extra money. There are websites like Chegg, Varsity Tutors, and Wisant, where you can find students to teach. You can help kids or adults with their schoolwork or preparing for tests, all from your own home. These websites handle things like payments and scheduling for you. You usually need to have some teaching experience or know a lot about the subject you're teaching. But if you're good at it, you can make over $1.20 an hour. It's a flexible way to teach students from all over the world and make good money while doing it. Number four, driving for Uber. One of the most profitable side jobs you can start quickly is driving for Uber. Becoming an Uber driver is really easy. You just need a smartphone with good internet, a valid driver's license, and a car that's in good shape. 
With these things, you're all set to start making money. Whether you want to make some extra cash or need a job with flexible hours, Uber gives you a great opportunity to do that. You get to be your own boss, choose when you work, and turn your car into a money-making machine. It's a side job with lots of potential for anyone who wants to give driving for ride-sharing apps a try. Number three, car washing and auto detailing. Car washing can be a great way to make some extra money, especially if you like working outside. You can offer your services to people who want their cars cleaned at home, or you can make deals with local businesses that have lots of cars to wash. You can either set up in someone's driveway or go to where the cars are like a company parking lot. You don't need to spend much money to get started. Just bring your ambition and a sponge. Whether you're sprucing up individual cars or big fleets, every wash you do can earn you some cash. If you enjoy being outdoors and making cars sparkle, give car washing a try and see how it goes. Number two, become a proofreading pro. Are you really good at finding mistakes in writing, but don't like writing yourself? Proofreading might be the perfect side job for you. Getting started in proofreading can be hard, but you don't necessarily need a degree in English to find work. Show off your skills with examples of your work and positive feedback from happy clients. Start by offering good prices and asking people you know if they need any proofreading done. Websites like freelance writing gigs can help you find jobs too. As you get more experience and good feedback, put together a portfolio of your work online to show to potential clients. Using a simple and professional template like Suhama by Squarespace can help you impress people. If you keep at it and work hard, proofreading can turn from a side job into a successful career. Number one, dropshipping. Dropshipping can be a great way to make money on the side. Instead of worrying about storing products or shipping them out, you just set up an online store and pick the things you want to sell. When people buy from your store, the supplier ships the products directly to them. You don't have to handle anything yourself. It's a low risk way to start your own business because you don't need to invest much money up front. Plus, you can run it from anywhere with the internet. Whether you're a parent wanting extra cash or a student aiming for financial freedom, dropshipping gives you a flexible and fun way to make money. Ready to turn your passions into profit? Choose one of these side hustles and take the first step towards financial freedom today. Whether it's creating digital art or driving for Uber, there's a side gig waiting for you. Don't wait for an opportunity to knock. Open the door to your entrepreneurial journey now. Today, I'm going to be interviewing an expert in making consistent money online in your spare time, doing micro tasks like user testing, surveys, and market research. She's going to tell us how she does it and makes $2,500 to $3,000 every single month. Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. I am doing great. I'm excited because I've been wanting to interview our guest for a couple of years because she is an expert at making money with these little micro tasks. Now, you might know that I'm the author of the book, Work From Home While You Roam, The Ultimate Guide to Jobs That Can Be Done From Anywhere, which is a resource guide with hundreds of jobs for all kinds of people with links to apply. And I have chapters specifically dedicated to the type of jobs that she's going to be talking about today. I get comments all the time from people asking how to make money doing these micro tasks. Either people apply for one and they think that they're just not the desired demographic for the job, or they get the job, it pays $5, and they don't think it's worth their time. There is a strategy to making the money consistently, and our guest TJ is going to tell us all about it today. Hey, everybody. This is TJ. And she's using an avatar for the interview because she really makes her money doing these micro tasks. And she prefers to stay anonymous because she's sharing her system with us. So TJ, thank you for agreeing to do the interview. You're welcome. I'm so glad to be here. So tell everybody um, how we met. So I started doing micro tasks thanks to your book. I actually thought that in order to do work from home, that I had to work from like 4 p.m. to 12 p.m. doing customer service. And I have a full-time job and a kid, and that just wasn't going to happen. So I bought your book, 
And uh, I found all of these places to sign up for. And now I'm consistently making $2,500 to $3,000 a month in my quote unquote spare time. It's great. So after I had been making money for like six months, I had to send you an email to thank you because you set me on this path. And uh, that's how we first met. And I can't, I honestly, I can't thank you enough because I never would have really understood what was possible out there without your book. And I'm going to use it doing these micro tasks when I retire in about another year. And so I'll be able to do these on the road. I like to see that the book is working for people, but I was so impressed by you and how you've made it work. And since then we've become friends and I've been dying to interview you so you can tell people how to make this work consistently every month. I mean, how much time are you putting into it to make that money? Uh, that is like um, four to five hours per day on weekdays and probably maybe an hour on Saturday and Sunday, but it's sort of give or take. What would you say, uh, um, 80, 90 hours a month? That sounds about right, yep. Yeah, so it's a job. I mean, you've made this a, a real job. Yes. But, but I mean, quick math, a job that pays $25, $27 an hour overall. Yes. Right. And, but the big thing is, is that I can do it on my own terms when I want to. Uh, and I can take a day off when I want to. I can go to the store. I can just decide not to do it today. It's out on my terms, which is fantastic. Yeah. My, my only yeah. commitment is like 10 minutes for a user test or an hour for an interview if I've set that up on a schedule. So it's completely my own, which I love having the power. For people that are brand new to this, can you tell us what the difference is between user testing and surveys and market research just really quickly? Like what kind of things are you really doing for these companies? Yes. So user testing is when a, for the website user testing, that is when a company is changing their website or they're creating a new website and they want to make sure that it works properly, that people understand how to use it. Uh, maybe you're Verizon and you are wanting, you're creating a, a new way for people to sign up, right? So maybe you want to talk to people who use Verizon already and have them go through the menus so that they understand how to sign up and what's supposed to happen and no one is confused by using their product. So, so you're testing their new website or homepage or app. Correct. It's not like you're going with your own Verizon account and going over and putting in some information. I know people are really scared about being scammed. You're just as a real person giving them feedback on if these websites or apps or pages, whatever, are easy to understand. Is that right? Correct. They may want it. Maybe it's a shopping website and they'll say, what do you think of this? They'll just say, give us an overall impression, right? And maybe they want to know, where would you go to find furniture for the bedroom? And they want to see if you can find that or would you be confused? Or how would you find red sheets? Well, can you find the bedroom things and can you find the filter for the sheets? That's what they sort of want to figure out. And they want your thoughts and your opinion as you're doing the little tasks that they give you so that they understand that people understand how to use their site. And it's very smart. And most companies do do that now because they spent all this time with their developers building out these sites. And then regular people can't figure out how to use them. So you're helping them to make it more user friendly. Correct. That's exactly right. Yes. With user testing, there's also one-on-one um, -on -one interviews. So the website user tests that I just talked about pay $10 and they take 10 or 15 minutes of your time and you're all done. For the interviews, you fill out the screener and if you qualify, then you schedule a time coming up in the next day or week, for example, and you would schedule either 30 minutes or an hour and you would talk about what one-on-one, -on -one, just like we're doing on a video call, uh, about whatever it is they want to talk about. And it's called an interview, but it's really a discussion. For example, they want to talk to Airstream owners. So you have filled out the screener and you qualify and they're designing a new component for Airstreams and they want your opinion. Like, what would you think of this? And what do you like about that? And so they're just asking your opinion on things. It's not, it's... um. It's very friendly and it's super fun. And uh, within, with user testing, it pays $60 for an hour or $30 for a half an hour of one-on-one -on -one interview time, just giving your opinion. Tell us what you do every morning to be successful with these micro tasks. 
Yes, I have something I call my morning coffee routine. And that is I front load my time by filling out different screeners uh, and different little mini applications for the tasks that I'm going to be doing. So on a very consistent basis, and what I call that is fishing. You have to put your pole out a whole lot. It's like fly fishing where you put your pole out a whole bunch of times real quick. And, you know, every 10th time or so you catch a little fish. So you have to put in the time in order to get the tasks. So in the morning, you go to these many different companies that you do this work with and you see what screeners or applications are available. And then you just go boop, 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 and you fill out information about yourself. Um, are there any tips that you have for what people should do to be chosen for those jobs? Uh, so what you want to do is be consistent and be honest. Don't say you're a back-end cloud developer if you don't know, you know, a hard drive from a USB port, you know. So <laughs> you definitely, you just want to be yourself. You want to be a uh, you want to be honest. That's really all there is to it. And then if you qualify, um, there is no specialized knowledge that you need. You're going to you're going to have the knowledge that you need to do the user testing if you follow the screener correctly. Yeah, because you're just being yourself. You're giving your opinion as a consumer, maybe. That's correct. Yes. There are yeah. longer screeners. If you're going to do market marketing research, those are like focus groups, like, for example, women's tennis shoes. Those screeners may be longer because you, they're setting you up to be uh, to be in a group for an hour or an hour and a half. And that may pay one hundred and seventy five to two hundred dollars. But they're looking for specific people. And so that's that survey may be a little bit longer. So there's a little bit more time invested up front for those big ones. Mm -hmm. But they do pay. When I get a task or a marketing research interview, I keep a list of those in a Google spreadsheet. It's the same spreadsheet where I keep the tab open that has all of the companies that I've ever signed up for because there are so many you can get lost. So I keep track of those. Very simple, the date, what the subject was, how much I'm supposed to be paid. And then also when I schedule an interview, I always put it in my Google Calendar so that I don't schedule over anything else and so that I don't miss any interviews. That's very important. You cannot, this is very important. You cannot schedule an interview and then not just show up. You've, you've got to commit to it or you might be kicked off the site. You need to be professional. We've talked all about it. You do it with a lot of different companies. People can see other companies you can do this with in the book, of course. But today you're going to be showing us how you do this with screenshots with three companies. What are the three companies you want to show us? Yeah, so the first one I think it's the easiest for everybody is an app on your phone, which is Android and iPhone, and it's called D-Scout. D-S-C-O-U-T. It's basically a marketing research app. It's where companies are put together with people who use their product or service so that they can get their opinion on it. And it is so much fun, and it pays really well. How would you characterize D-Scout? What are they looking for? So most of the time, you are doing things on your phone. You're taking a video or pictures or doing little diary entries on your phone. Every once in a while, they do have live one-on-one -on -one interviews, which would take place on your laptop or your phone. I mean, I'm sorry, your laptop or your tablet. But for the most part, it's all done on the phone. With D-Scouts, there's two kinds of missions. There's the express mission. And with the express mission, if you qualify, you're going to fill it out right there. And it'll take, they'll tell you, it'll take eight minutes or 10 minutes to complete the mission. And it tells you it pays between five and $20. And then there are the regular um, missions. And those applications can take eight to 10 minutes. And you'll find out in a week or two if you qualified for that. And so you want to do as many of those as possible and keep doing them for anything that you think you qualify for. And you got to kiss a lot of frogs, like I said, but you will get the jobs if you keep applying. Now, can I give you three tips about using D-Scout? Yes, please. Okay. So when you do your profile, you want to, and when you take any videos on D-Scout, you're going to want to make sure that your background is clean and uncluttered. You want to want to make sure that there's no bright light behind you, that they can see your face clearly. 
And when you want to set up your camera, like at least so that it's leaning on something, you're not holding it and it's not moving around. And you want to make sure that it's at eye level. No one wants to look up your nose. So you want to be bright and clear and cheerful. And if they ask you a question like, in a one minute video, tell us what you like about Cheerios. You don't want to say, I like Cheerios because they taste good. You want to be bright and energetic and say, I love Cheerios because they taste so good. And I like them with bananas. And use your hand and be dynamic. So they have to be able to see you and hear you well. And you need to have an opinion and be energetic. And that makes you uh, more likely to be chosen for those Correct. Missions. Correct. Okay. Now, with D-Scout, if they're looking for somebody who wears a Fitbit watch and you don't wear a Fitbit watch, don't say that you do because they're going to ask you for a picture of your Fitbit watch or a picture of the cheese that you say that you eat or the shoes that you say that you own. So you, you just want to be honest and, you know, and if you get picked, great. You'll have a great time doing these missions. They're a lot of fun. You can put out your line and do the title screener. And for those, you get picked right away and do them on the spot and get paid. Or for the bigger pain ones, longer application, you find out in a week and then you get those jobs later on. Correct. Yep. Some, you, sometimes you find out a, a couple of days later, but it's usually a week or two. And when you click on the mission to do the application, if you scroll down, it'll tell you when the mission is supposed to start how long it will take. And so you sort of have an idea, but I don't pay attention to that. I just fill out lots of applications and hope for the best. How does D-Scout pay you? D-Scout pays you um, via PayPal. Every week? It, pay it pays you, it will tell you in the mission, but it's usually like uh, within a week after the mission ends. The next company that TJ is going to tell us about and show us is IntelliZoom. Yes. So with IntelliZoom, for the most part, you're going to be recording your screen like I talked about before, and there is, it, it'll tell you at the bottom of the screen what it wants you to do, and you fill out the screener, and if you qualify, you're going to do the task right away, and it will be um, navigating a website, or it could be something called a card sort, where they're just going to ask you to move these uh words into different categories like maybe you are let me use bank of america again and you're changing all your menus so they give you a whole bunch of things and ask you to sort them would this go under loans or accounts or you know whatever it is and it's whatever you think it goes to there's no right or wrong answers and they have a whole bunch of people do that to crowdsource to make sure that they're going to put those things in where most people think they should go so that's a card sort and then in IntelliZoom, you could also do screeners for interviews. And you just look at the website, see what's available, and fill out a screener. I'll check IntelliZoom multiple times per day. Why is that? Uh, because screeners come up all day long randomly. So you need to check um, pretty consistently. Like, I'll keep a tab open and sort of check, you know, every half an hour, every hour, or whenever I have a moment, I'll go and see if there's if there's nothing on user testing, I'll pop over to IntelliZoom and see if there's a screener there. IntelliZoom pays 21 days after you have done it. What do people need to do to be successful with this company? So you will need to audition the first thing, but it's very easy. It leads you through exactly what you want to do. And with all user testing, the most important thing to understand is that they, if you're user testing a website, they want your constant stream of thought. So no silences whatsoever. Supposing at the bottom, it says, um, you have just landed at this shoe store. What do you think of this website? Scroll through. And so you scroll down, you would say, wow, this looks really great. I like the colors. This part is confusing because it's pretty crowded and blah, 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 blah. And there's, you know, so you just keep going. And then the next little task might say, where would you go to find women's shoes? And so before you even move your cursor, you'd go, well, 
for women's shoes, I definitely would look for something across the top that says men's or women's or those categories. Uh -huh. I see over here that it says women's. So I would click on women's and look at and and as you're doing each thing, you're going to say what you're doing. You just keep up a stream of thought consciousness and it becomes more natural after a while. So you want to make sure that you do that, that you're bright and clear. You want to have an opinion when they ask you, how does the website look? Say, I don't care. It looks fine to me. They don't want to hear that. Don't say that. You want to say, give an opinion. Well, it looks clean and uncluttered and I like this or I don't like this or this font could be better or, you know, I'm I'm a 70 year old woman and this font is really hard to read. They want to know that. So you don't have to suck up to them. They really want to know your real opinion so that they can make it better. Do you think that the more jobs you do, the more they want to hire you? Do you build like a track record with these companies? You do with some of them. You definitely have, um, there's de you're definitely graded like on user testing. Um, you, you, your, your last certain amount counts. So I'm a five-star tester on user testing and that takes a while to develop. So I recommend that everyone does Dscout first. And then when you get used to talking into the camera and doing that sort of thing and giving your thoughts and opinions, then I would move to IntelliZoom. That would, and then after you've done some card sorts, maybe an interview, a, at least five or 10 website user tests, then after that, I would move on to user testing. You really want to have some experience before you move to user testing because it's an audition process. And if you don't pass the audition, then you can't, there are no second chances. So you want to make sure that you kind of know what you're doing first before user testing. The third company you're going to tell us about and show us is user testing? That's correct. Now you mentioned auditions. So explain what an audition is. Yes. So they're basically going to have you go through a very simple user testing and they're going to make sure that you can follow directions, that you can, your audio is working and that your video is working and that you sound intelligent and intelligible, right? So that you know what you're doing uh, so that they know that you can speak and that you can do a train of thought and follow direction. This is the third one. You've gotten practice with the first two. Now you're on user testing. Does it pay more than the other ones? So user testing has, it pays more in that there's a lot more jobs available. There's a lot more fishing to be done. And so uh, there's lots and lots and lots of screeners. You won't qualify for a lot of them. Just skip to the ones that you think you might qualify for. They have a lot more interviews, like the one-on-one -on -one interviews that pay 30 or $60. There's a lot of them. And in fact, once you get in there, I go three or four times a day and I do control F on my computer, which is find. And I search for 60 and I search for 30. And those are the ones I do first because those pay the most, right? So user testing has lots more screeners than IntelliZoom and DScout. So with user testing, you're paid exactly seven days from when you did the test. So if I did a test right now and it's uh, Sunday morning at 10 a.m., I will get paid seven days from now at Sunday morning at exactly 10 a.m. and it's sent to your PayPal. The most valuable thing that I did was keep track of every single company I signed up for so that because when you're doing a whole bunch all at once, it can get confusing. The other tip I'd like to give people is if this is something that you're going to do and sign up with a bunch of companies, you really, really, I consider getting an alternate email address, something that sounds professional, that's not too hard to type because you're going to be typing it a lot and it's not confusing for people. Uh, but you're going to, that way, you, your regular inbox is not clogged up because it will be clogged up. You definitely want a separate email address. So you really tackle this like a job. You have a routine, a process, a professional way to do things. And that has probably made you more successful in the long run, maybe than people that are just doing it haphazardly. Is that true? Yes. You have to be consistent. You really need to uh, do it every day or at least Monday through Friday. And um, I really recommend that um, I get up early in the morning and do it before my job because on the 
things are starting on the East Coast, and I'm on the West Coast, so I get up early, so I'm doing it with East Coast time. There's far less work available on the weekends. It's really a Monday through Friday gig, and uh, there are things on the weekends, but just not as many. So you need to be up early, and you need to be up early on the weekdays. TJ, this has been great information for anybody that really wants to make money doing this. So if there's somebody out there that wants to make extra money doing this or has done it before and failed, what would you tell them? What final advice would you give them? I would say keep at it. Be consistent. Keep fishing. You can't just fish once and say, oh, I give up. You've got to do it a whole bunch of times. And then it will come naturally to you and you'll be able to uh, get those jobs consistently coming in. And even if you only get 30 or 40 extra dollars a day from doing a few user tests, that's more than you had before. I am retiring in another year, but I'm going to have this extra income when I'm on the road. I really will be working from home while I row, right? I really will be able to supplement my income. So it's just going to make it, you know, so much gravy. And so far with this money, uh, I have paid off uh, 90% of my RV. I've been making double and triple payments. I went to the Yukon. I went to Belize. I went to uh, Cabo San Lucas. Uh, I went to Florida. Uh, All on money that I made from this side hustle. Thank you, Robin. I can't thank you enough for starting me down this path. You're welcome, but thank you for telling us how you just made it sing. I know that people are going to need this information, and I really appreciate you taking the time to walk us through it. Um, Everybody, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. This video is going to be about the 10 best side hustles for the time poor in 2024. And since I respect your time so much, I'm also going to make this a very fast video, right? Because I used to be extremely time poor myself. I used to work as a pharmacist. I was working as a pharmacist during the pandemic, which as you can imagine was insanely busy and insanely stressful. And I did not have very much time. And I started a side hustle during the pandemic that ended up making me over 300 K per month. So I'm going to talk about some of the side hustles that I think are the best and what you should potentially start yourself. And we're gonna get into that right after you gently tap the like button to show respect for me respecting you. Or you can just cheers the like button as well. That works as well. All right, so first one on the list is going to be kind of a hilarious one, but I always like to start with these funny ones. And that is going to be selling worm poop. Yes, you heard that right, selling worm poop. What you do here is you buy a bunch of earthworms, you set up a terrarium for them, basically like an earthworm farm. Then you collect their poop and you sell it to gardeners, farmers, and horticulture enthusiasts. And these are specifically people who value organic growing processes, right? So as this Reddit user says, he sells worm poop. He feeds them table scraps and then they shit out the best fertilizer in the world. And worm poop, generally speaking, sells for about $3 a pound. So this is a very passive way of making money. You can make some extra money on the side doing this. You could even turn it into a full blown operation. So I thought this one was funny. You can definitely make money with it. It's going to be probably pretty hard to make, you know, a significant amount of money, but I'm going to go ahead and give this one a six out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, guys, I was able to earn a full-time income from YouTube and you can earn a full-time income from YouTube as well. And on Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm gonna be hosting a live training where I'm gonna be revealing the five biggest secrets on growing and monetizing your YouTube channel. And you can do this with less than one hour of work per day. So I'm basically gonna be giving you a free roadmap to growing your YouTube channel. And I'm gonna cover everything you need to know from choosing your niche to choosing video ideas. And the important parts of the process when it comes to making YouTube videos. Next one on the list is going to be niche tutoring. So if you're time poor, that probably means you're working really hard. There's a good chance you're also in a good job. And that means you could likely tutor people on very specific subjects. So let's say you were a pharmacist like me, for instance, you could tutor people on the pharmacy college admissions test or the PCAT. That's exactly what I did when I was in college and I made over $100 per hour. Now, realistically, there's not that many people out there that asked for my services. And so I'd only tutor people a few times a month, but that was still a significant amount of money every month, especially considering that I was a college kid. And this is exactly what you can do as well. You can tutor people on something very specific that's extremely valuable and they will pay you a good amount of money for it. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Something very similar to this would be career coaching. So this is basically, again, if you're in a good career or even if you're just in an entry level career, but it's one that a lot of people wanna get into, you can offer this. And basically what you do is you tutor people on the quickest and easiest way to get into that career themselves. So imagine if you were to go back in time to when you just discovered that career and you were able to tell yourself exactly what to do in order to get into it. You probably would have saved yourself a ton of time, effort, and money. Well, you can do that for other people as well, and they can pay you hundreds of dollars an hour in many cases. So that's another excellent one if you are time poor. So I'm going to go ahead and give that one a 9 out of 10 opportunity score as well. Another one that's similar to this is making resumes. And again, you want to be very specific about this. You want to help yeah. people make resumes that are related to your career. And because of the fact that you're in the career, you're gonna have a much better idea of what looks good and doesn't look good on a resume. And then you can either create the resumes for them or coach them on how to do the resumes themselves. And again, you can charge hundreds of dollars per resume and they do most of the work for you and then you just make some changes at the end. I know people that have started seven figure businesses doing this, so this is a legit business that you can start but you can also just make some extra money on the side. So this one gets a 9.5 out of 10 opportunity score. And now the next one is the one that I did in order to escape my nine to five and have financial location and time independence and travel the world. I haven't even been back to the US in two years. I've been traveling all over the world and that is starting a YouTube channel. So YouTube is, in my opinion, the best social media platform to make money on. It actually doesn't take that long to make YouTube videos. You literally just have to either share what you already know, so your expertise that you already know, or if you're not an expert, expert on anything, you can just share your journey of becoming an expert on something. And people love following along to those channels that basically share what they're learning. And it doesn't take that long to do that, maybe just a few hours a week. And the potential rewards are massive. So there's nearly 500 people in the United States alone that work full time on YouTube. And that is a massive amount of people. That's almost the same amount of people as an entire country. And if you take that globally, it basically is bigger than some countries. And these are people that are making a full-time income from YouTube. So you can definitely dedicate a few hours a week to doing this, and a year later, who knows what's gonna happen? You might be making a full-time income from YouTube as well. And this is something I did myself. I was incredibly busy as a pharmacist, but I just spent a few hours every single week making my YouTube channel. And within a very short period of time, I replaced my pharmacy income, and then I got to 30K per month, and then I got to 100K per month, and then I got beyond that. And I've also helped a bunch of other people start successful YouTube channels channels as well. For instance, Josh was working at a very prestigious company, Microsoft, and he was working really hard. He started his YouTube channel on the side, grew it, and now he makes over 186K per month. So he's absolutely crushing it. And by the way, you can check out some free training down in the description as well as the pinned comment below on how to grow and make money from your YouTube channel. And additionally, I do take a few coaching clients every month and you have to apply to that. It'll be in the exact same link down below. But I only work with people who are very serious about growing and making money from their YouTube channel because I can only work with a few people a month. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, YouTube gets a perfect 10 out of 10. I absolutely love it. Next is going to be selling unused stuff. So you could sell your own stuff that's just laying around your house or laying in storage and make a good amount of money from it. A lot of people that do this make thousands and thousands of dollars. And they just have a lot of stuff laying around that they're never gonna use and it's just gonna collect dust. So you might as well sell it and make it useful to others. So this is an obvious one, but you know, I can't tell you how many people could absolutely do this. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Another one is you could flip items. So if you're familiar with certain items, for instance, let's use couches as an example or furniture, you can just kind of look at a couch or look at a piece of furniture and you know approximately how much it costs because you're familiar with the market. You can easily buy and sell these things and make a ton of money. There are people out there that flip furniture that make hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Like couch flipping, for instance, is huge in the US because people will buy these couches brand new for $5,000, $10,000. And then a few years later, it gets a little dirty and you know they just throw it away or they sell it for basically nothing. And you can just go in, clean it up a little bit, post it online, and then sell it for 50% of what they originally bought it for. It's extremely lucrative. And flipping in general is extremely lucrative. I've been doing this since I was a teenager. It's one of the oldest side hustles known to man. Was good back then, it's always gonna be good. It just takes a lot of patience. So for instance, you could buy a car if you're familiar with the prices of cars, you know you're getting a good deal, let's say you buy it for $2,000, and then you sell it a few months later for $3,500. And it basically just sat there and you didn't have to do any work. So yeah, flipping is amazing, awesome side hustle. I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be renting out your car. So you can do this using an app like Turo. And if your car is just sitting there while you're at work or it's sitting there over the weekend and you're barely even using it, or if you have multiple cars and you don't even use one of them, might as well rent it out and make some money. 
and you can make between $50 and $100 per day in many cities. And Turo claims that the average annual income generated for renting out one car is usually $10,516. So yeah, this is another really good one. I'll go ahead and give it a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one is going to be either renting out your unused space or renting out household appliances or tools. And you can do this using neighbor.com. And there's other websites out there like rentmy.com or rentmyequipment or uds.com. Wow. All of these, you can do the same stuff. You can rent your stuff out. And yeah, renting your unused space, like let's say you have a bunch of space in your basement, it's not being used. Storage is really expensive. And so people in your area can just store their stuff there and save a little bit of money versus a traditional storage space. And since you're not using the space anyways, you might as well rent it out. Same thing with tools or appliances or random stuff that's laying around your garage. You can rent that stuff out while you're not using it. And this doesn't take very much of your time, effort, or money, but it can be a really good source of passive or semi-passive income. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. And the next one is going to be real estate. So this is one of the oldest ways that people have been making money for the last 100 years. You basically buy a property, a lot of the time you'll get a mortgage on it and you pay, let's say five to 20% down, and then you rent it out to people. This is a good way to make cash flow, accrue equity, and save money on taxes. So this is another really good side hustle. Tons of channels out there that talk about how to do real estate, but obviously it's a really good one. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. I found 13 automated side hustles that you can actually make money from. And many of these you can make over $550 a day. Nice. And the first one is going to be writing on Medium. And writing on Medium actually works a lot like creating YouTube videos. You basically just write your articles, you post them on Medium, and then if they get a bunch of views, you get to share the AdSense revenue with the platform. And there are a ton of different people who have posted about how they make money doing this. For instance, this guy made a video about how he makes $1,000 a month doing this, but you can make much, much more than that. And generally speaking, medium writers make about $15 to $30 per 1,000 views. And that's actually higher than what you make on YouTube. And it makes sense because writing blogs has been around for a long time and they've sort of figured out how to monetize them better. And another cool thing is you can use AI in order to help you write these articles. So this one is absolutely perfect for this video. Definitely one that's untapped in my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, gently tap that like button if you appreciate all of my hard work making these videos. And let's jump into it with number two on the list, which is going to be a Twitter copywriter or a Twitter ghostwriter. So this is basically where you write copy on Twitter. So copywriting is sort of sales using the written word. So you're writing things for the purpose of selling people something. And in many cases, you would actually be ghostwriting for an influencer or somebody who has a bigger account. And that basically means you're writing for them. And again, this is another one where you can heavily utilize tools like ChatGPT or Bard. Some other really good ones would be copy.ai or jasper.ai. And copywriters make about 59 to $91,000 a year. And if you specialize even further, you can make more than that. And that's exactly what you'd be doing in this situation. So yeah, this is another really good one. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is gonna be becoming a YouTube content creator. So this is one where you would be making YouTube videos. And the great thing about YouTube is when you upload these YouTube videos, they're basically gonna be little soldiers that are working around the clock 24 seven to make you money for the next 10 to 20 years. And Google actually owns YouTube. And so YouTube has a ton of data from all around the internet, which gives them a huge advantage. And even small YouTubers can make a full-time income on YouTube. So yeah, there's no other social media platform out there that's as good as YouTube. YouTube is absolutely the best. And I like to always say this in these videos because I see all these channels that talk about different side hustles and they don't talk about the one that they're actually spending all their time doing, which is YouTube. And don't get me wrong, there's some other great side hustles, but YouTube, in my opinion, is without a doubt the best opportunity. Yes, it is. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a 10 out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, I do coach a few people every month on how to grow and make money from YouTube. And if you think you're the right type of person that is really ready to dedicate yourself and you're committed to doing it, you can apply with the link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. I also have some free training in the same link so you'll learn a lot about how YouTube works. So definitely worth checking out. Next is going to be selling on Theme Forest. And this is basically where you're gonna be selling different types of WordPress themes. 
WordPress. And WordPress is one of the most common website builders on the market. And of course, you can use different types of AI in order to help you build out really nice themes. And the average theme creator on Theme Forest is making about $390 a month. And that's actually not bad. Most of these different types of websites, the average person doesn't make any money. So yeah, this one is pretty good. I'll go ahead and give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, guys, I was able to earn a full-time income from YouTube and you can earn a full-time income from YouTube as well. And on Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm gonna be hosting a live training where I'm gonna be revealing the five biggest secrets on growing and monetizing your YouTube channel. And you can do this with less than one hour of work per day. So I'm basically gonna be giving you a free roadmap to growing your YouTube channel. And I'm gonna cover everything you need to know from choosing your niche to choosing video ideas and then the important parts of the process when it comes to making YouTube videos. And I'll take you through the steps and strategies that help me achieve a full-time income from YouTube within a few months. And during the live training, I'm actually gonna be giving away a free mini course that took me a ridiculous amount of time to make. And I'm gonna be answering any questions that you have about YouTube with a live Q&A. And there are limited seats, so make sure to sign up by clicking the link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below and I'll see you there. Next is going to be selling AI prompts. So when it comes to AI, there's this concept called GIGO, which means garbage in, garbage out. And that basically means that if you have really bad inputs, you're gonna get really bad outputs. And so the only way to make your inputs and therefore your outputs better is to improve your prompts because the prompts are what you plug into the AI. And believe it or not, you can actually use AI to make better prompts. I know, it's mind blowing. And here on Fexel, there's a prompt creator that's made over 7,400 prompt sales. So they've made a ton of money. So yeah, this is a pretty good one, especially if you want to get into tech and kind of just like get really nerdy with it and learn all about AI. This can be really good. I'll go ahead and give it a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Now, if you want to skip doing side hustles and just get a job in tech, I think one of the easiest jobs you can possibly get would be in tech sales. And the specific career that you would get into in tech sales, that's an entry level career, is going to be Business Development Representative or BDR. And this is actually a career I've helped a ton of people get into on this channel. I have a bunch of different interviews of people that I've helped people get into this. And there's actually some free training on exactly how all of them were able to get into it, which I'll put down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. So definitely check that free training out if you wanna actually get a job in tech, because that's probably one of the easiest entry-level jobs that you can get into. Next on the list is going to be blogging. And I think there's a specific type of blogging where there's a ton of opportunity right now. And that specific type of blogging is actually converting your blogs into multiple different languages. And you can do this with AI. So this is something that a friend of mine has actually been doing in some of the most competitive and most rewarding niches out there. And at first I thought he was a little crazy doing this, but he's been having some insanely good success. And all he does is he just takes existing blogs in English or he writes existing blogs in English, then he converts them into a bunch of different languages automatically using AI. And then he's able to make like 10 times more from every single blog that he writes. So yeah, this can be a really good opportunity. There's also just a lot of other AI related opportunities out there right now. And there's also lots of guides online about how people have automated like 90% of their content creation. So you can heavily utilize AI to help you with any type of blog writing. So yeah, this one's really good. I'll go ahead and give it an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. Next is going to be faceless YouTube channels or also known as automated YouTube channels. Now, I do have some problems with these, don't get me wrong, because one, YouTube is my favorite platform. I think it's the best platform that you can start entrepreneurship or just start making content on. But with that being said, there's a lot of these different like faceless YouTube automation offers out there, people are trying to teach it, and it doesn't work out for most people. And I still think creating a personal brand is gonna be your best bet. But with that being said, there are some ways and some types of content that you can create YouTube automation content on and it can be somewhat successful. And I'll give you a hint, some of the best niches to target are niches that have older people in them because generally speaking, older people have more money and so therefore the AdSense for older people is gonna be higher and with YouTube automation, you pretty much make all of your money from AdSense. So yeah, YouTube automation can be really good. I'll go ahead and give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be ebook publishing. So I asked a guy who actually owns a 
company that specializes in literally selling internet companies. So his name is Joe and he owns the company Empire Flippers. And he actually told me when I asked him, what do you think the best opportunity this year is? And basically like if you were starting over, what would you do, right? If you had the knowledge that you have now. And he actually told me he'd probably get into Amazon Kindle publishing. And I was really shocked by this and I don't necessarily agree with him. But with that being said, he is a guy who buys and sells online businesses. So he probably knows his stuff. And that's exactly what you'd be doing here. You would literally be using AI to help you write a bunch of books, help you put a bunch of information out there. And you'd probably be uploading it to Amazon KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. And you can make a ton of money. For instance, Steve Scott makes 30 to $60,000 every single month doing this. And once you put the books up, it's completely passive. Now, it's very important to select the right niches and make sure that it's the type of content that you can automate well. Also, I do think a big opportunity in the future is going to be, you know, doing this, but doing it in a bunch of different languages. But yeah, this can be a really good opportunity. Um, honestly, after looking into it, after Joe kind of recommended it, I did see the appeal of it. I'm going to go ahead and give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be stock photography and also stock videography. And as you can probably imagine, AI is getting incredibly good to the point where it actually can make videos. And people out there want to use these stock videos that look like they're real videos, but they have a person doing some specific thing that they want them to do. And if you're someone who's really good at prompting and really good at using AI, this can be an excellent opportunity for you. And here's a video from this guy who talks about how he made 170K selling stock photos. And on average, stock photographers make two cents per image per month. So you might think that's not very much, but realistically, if you upload like 10,000 different photos, that turns into a lot of money. So it does take some time to kind of get your portfolio uploaded, but once you've got it uploaded, you're gonna be good to go. So yeah, this one's pretty good. I'll go ahead and give it a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be selling Canva templates. So you've probably used Canva before. It's an incredibly useful online software and you can use it to make photos, videos, thumbnails, graduation cards, wedding cards, just like anything. Basically anything that you need to make that has to do with graphics or video stuff, you can make it using Canva. And guess what? Canva has a bunch of different free and paid templates. And guess what you can use in order to create those templates? AI. And here's somebody talking about how they made over $8,000 doing this. Now you can also sell these Canva templates on Etsy and the top selling Canva template shops are making 20 to 30K per month. So yeah, this is one of those under the radar side hustles that you don't really hear about a lot. And sometimes that can be a good sign because it means it's not saturated. So I'll go ahead and give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be print on demand. And this is where you basically have somebody order some kind of design before you actually make it. So you might make some kind of design that you put on a t-shirt or maybe you put it on a mug and then when they order it, there's an automation that's sent out to the company to make it and ship it to them. So the great thing about this is you don't have to worry about inventory costs, storage costs or anything like that. You don't have to assume any risk. The only time you pay is when somebody else buys. And there's a story here about a 33 year old that makes 14,600 a month in passive income and he just works one hour a day on his online business. And he of course is doing print on demand. And the average monthly income for a print on demand business is actually $4,600. That is incredibly high for an average, guys. This is like the average person is still making $4,600. And like I said before, with a lot of these side hustles, the average person is making zero money. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be starting some kind of online store. So for instance, this could be like Etsy. So on Etsy, you can sell all kinds of different things from different types of templates, different types of planners. You can sell handmade jewelry. There's just like so many different things that you can sell. And Etsy makes it really easy for you because they do the majority of the work for you. All you have to do is just list your stuff and sell it. They take care of basically everything else. And I've met a ton of people that are making good money selling on Etsy. I do think it's a relatively untapped market and there's so many different things you can sell. Anything from physical products to digital products. So yeah, I really like this one. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. All right, so the next one is relatively closely related but it's more specific and that is creating and selling printables. So printables are anything that you 
you could maybe like put up on your wall, for instance. So a painting on your wall or some type of poster. And as you can see, this is something you could obviously use AI for. So you could create a bunch of really cool looking printables using AI, list them up on a website like Etsy, or there's a bunch of other different types of websites out there where you can do this. And then when the person orders it, they'll actually print it out and they'll ship it out to the person. This is another really good way of making money. I'll go ahead and give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score.